This is Chef Nathan Brown. Chef Jen Benny. Chef Thomas Coy. I'm Social 31 Restaurant, and you're watching The, the Front Porch Show. Hello, hello. The Front Porch Show. We're set to go. The Front Porch Show. Hello, hello. We're set to go. On with the Front Porch Show. It's Dynamo. The Front Porch Show. Magnifico. The Front Porch Show. It's Dynamo Magnifico. On with the Front Porch Show. We'll share a laugh or two. Big smiles for me and you. Hello, hello. The Front Porch Show. We're set to go. The Front Porch Show. Hello, hello. We're set to go on with the Front Porch Show. Well, welcome again to the fourth show of the season for the summer. We're doing five by video, and so we're happy to have you here again on the Front Porch yeah. Show. Yeah. yeah! So, Don, tell us, what's going to happen? Well, John, we have Kelly Deeks, who will tell us about the town's kayak borrowing system. We're going to meet the owners of the St. Mary's First Craft Brewery, Broken Rail, Ryan and Aaron Lehman. And our musical guest is... Daisy Anderson, who's still going strong at the tender age of 85. And we're also going to have Michelle Lewis, who's going to talk about training pets. All that and more at the Front Porch Show. Once again, our sponsor for this show is Partners in Employment with offices in Stratford, Listowel, Exeter, Goderich, and of course St. Mary's. If you're looking for a job or a career change, contact them. The St. Mary's number is 519-284-0112 or you can email PIE at partnersinemployment.on.au. C A. Okay, Frank. Making it work. Partners in employment. Making it work. They can find you a job. Making it work. Partners in employment. Making it work. They can find you a job. Job. Bow bow. Pass a push. Job. Bow bow. Pass a pretty push. Here we go. Making it work. Partners in employment, make it work. They can find you a job, make it work. Partners in employment, make it work. They can find you a job. Pow, pow. Partners in employment. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, Frank, I've got a little pal here today this week. Can you come over here? Oh, look at this. Look at this. Come I'm on in over. love. We've got a bush in front of her. <laughs> oh, look at this. Come on, Hank. Oh, so let's do a song for Hank. Remember this one? My dog does the hanky panky. 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 And I just have to mention that Hank is an Australian shepherd and he belongs to the owner of Shampoo's Country Spa, Shayla Claiborne. Wow. Our first guest is Kelly Deeks Johnson. Uh, she's the Tourism and Economic Development Manager, and the doggy just took the biscuit. She's going to talk about a brand new program we have in St. Mary's that the town has initiated. Hello, Kelly. Hi, John. The town has created a kayak loan program and a yak shack. Where did the idea come from? Well, the idea was actually derived by Andrew Hodges. Uh, last summer, he mentioned that he thought it would be pretty neat. There was so much activity on the river that it would be a great opportunity to start um, making this accessible for others to be able to participate in some of the activities and some of the fun uh, with exploring our, our waterways. After many months of planning, how did the program reach fruition? 
The Kinsmen stepped up and so did the uh, Home Building Centre here in St. Mary's to provide the materials um, at, a, at a, a low cost and also they made a significant donation to the shack itself and then the Kinsmen crew built the Yak Shack uh, in their uh, off time from from their full-time daily duties so it's been a it's been a definite community project we've had donation of marine kits from canadian tire as well as a kayak and then we've had donation of life of life jackets um, from a local company uh, called grayson international how do i get a kayak to use a ca the kayak program is uh, what we're referring to as the kayak loan program and it's uh, run kind of similar to our fishing rod loan program through the public library here in st mary's so you would, uh, you can now reserve a kayak. We originally had this as kind of a, a walk-in system, but the demand has been very uh, high, much higher than we anticipated. So uh, we've made some recent changes to it that you can now reserve uh, a kayak for a time. We have a few times available. There's a, a three hour maximum usage to allow others the opportunity. The library, uh, the, the program runs uh, when the library is open. So it is not open on Sundays, it's Monday through Saturday at this point and uh, you can reserve your kayak through calling or visiting the public library in person or we do accept walk-ins for those those times that are not already reserved you have to provide photo ID you'll get your paddle your marine kit and your life jacket and you have to sign a waiver as well as uh, review our two-page uh, FAQ on the safety of using our river and a kayak that's great how much does it cost it's free for the community uh, and tourists to use. Um, we, uh, we wanted to make this uh, a good opportunity for everybody to start seeing, seeing the town from a different angle because there is a lot more to, to explore when you're out on the waterways and uh, going under the Sarnia Bridge, for example, with the Grand Trunk Trail is a beautiful scene and it's very Instagrammable. <laughs> what precautions are being taken for safety? Well, this is definitely uh, a program that we've had lots of conversations about safety. We are relying on people to have uh, a bit of knowledge and awareness on their abilities with utilizing a kayak in the river, particularly in the sense of children. Um, the program is uh, we only allow one person on the kayak. We do not uh, allow people to bring their children on a kayak with them, for example. Um, and we, we are recommending the age of eight and above. Um, and, uh, and even that, we need parents to be aware of, of what the child's ability is in order to be on the water. Um, everyone has to wear a life jacket. Uh, we have some specifics in the FAQ about um, being able to lift the kayak in order to get it back on the yak shack or to lift it off the yak shack, as well as uh, getting in the water. Um, so we've, we've done our best to try and uh, communicate kind of those rules as well as give indications of what to wear, what to pack, what to expect. And of course we're encouraging everybody to, advising everybody I should say, to stay away from the falls, particularly in times of uh, a heavy rainfall. Um, there is a current uh, at the falls so it can be particularly dangerous. So we're encouraging everybody to stick to, away from the shoreline from the falls um, and explore the river at a safe distance from there. Given the success of the program, do you see it expanding? I do. Yes, we've had lots of conversations about the future of the program and there's evidently um, a want to be able to uh, do this and explore. And I think people are having a lot of fun with it, uh, which is nice to see. So I do think that we will expand the program going forward into the future. I hope so anyway. I hope that this uh, is a great season for it and that the next month or so um, you know, we have, we have great success. We, we hope to expand in the future with various things like the, the potential for adding in a, a, a dock for easy access, um, et cetera. So, so we will definitely have conversations. We're obviously trying this out. The program's going to run till September 30th. After that, we will pull the kayaks off the Yak Shack and, uh, regroup for next season and see where we're at. If I fall into the river, Will you send somebody to fish me out? <laughs> well, you'll have a whistle, John. So the first person to hear your whistle will come and get you. So it may not be me, but it'll be someone. We'll make sure you get out of the river. <laughs> Thanks for coming into the Front Porch Show, Kelly. Thanks, John, for having me. I'm here at the Broken Rail with 
Brian and Aaron Lehman, the owners of the new brew pub in St. Mary's, and we want to welcome them to town and ask them what's the best part about doing business in St. Mary's? Definitely the people. Definitely the people. <laughs> Excellent. We think we've got some great people in the town of St. Mary's. Tell us about your experience coming to town and starting a business. It's actually been pretty overwhelming, the, the positive support. Um, there's everybody and anybody offering their services for free. Just let us help this uh, become a reality and succeed. And of course, for most businesses, they've had to adapt to the COVID realities of the last 18 months. I'm sure that opening a business during COVID presented its own unique challenges. It certainly wasn't our friend at all. Uh, the price of everything went up, delays with everything. It, it was a challenge. It was a huge challenge. I won't lie, but we're here. We made her. <laughs> Great. Now that you are open, of course, we're seeing some activity here, and we're all pleased about that. Have you been pleased with the uh, show of support since you've opened the doors? Yeah, absolutely. We've had amazing support from the town. Uh, the locals have been amazing. Uh, patio has been very busy since we opened up, for sure. Terrific, terrific. And now that you are open, have you got any additional plans that you want to share with us? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, sometime in the near future when we get over the COVID expenses, we're going to convert our caboose in a, a food truck concept. So that'll be kind of cool to offer some fresh food here. And then, uh, you know, should the town do really well at supporting us, maybe we'll have a production facility here and open up more of this building and restore it closer to its original form. Well, terrific. I know people for years have been wanted to see some sort of business activity on these facilities that would bring people to the north end of town, and I think you guys are the perfect fit. Uh, so on behalf of the Front Port Show, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank yeah, you. It's, it's an honor. Thanks very much. We're going to take the opportunity while we're here at the Broken Rail to ask everybody the question of the week, which is... What is the best thing about St. Mary's? Wes, what would you say? Well, I may be biased here, but I'd say, obviously, broken rail. <laughs> it's clearly the best thing about St. Mary's now. But, like, yeah, you know, the, the people are very fantastic people around here and beautiful landscape. It's just a great town to live in. And even better now that i got a nice, fresh pint in my hand. Cheers. Cheers. And we're here with Andy, and he's got an answer to our question of the week. I would say family, but I'd say Broken Rail is a pretty close second. And we're here with Becky, who has an idea. I think my favorite thing about St. Mary's is how quaint it is. You can definitely feel the small town feel. Everybody just wants to help everybody out. I really like that. It's not big city bustle. So I think that's my favorite thing. We're here to ask Tony what does he think is the best thing about the town of St. Mary's. Well, everything. Because I've been here living for 21 years, and I believe that I'm happy to be here. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I'm proud. You know, everything's good over here in St. Mary's, seriously. That's why I'm here at uh, this place, because they have the best beer, Broken Rail, number one. Believe me. <laughs> Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Thank you very much. Don, thank you for all of those insights. Frank? Yes. What do you think is the best thing about St. Mary's? Well, one of the best things about St. It's hard. You can make a whole list of things about St. Mary's, Ontario, here in Canada for all the people that are around the world that are watching. You have to come here to really understand how the word best really means. Best, to me, really means that it's a, the best place to live. It's the best place to raise a family. It's the best place to make a friend. It's the best place to actually come out sometimes on a Sunday night and look at the front porch show because that's about the best thing that I can think of at the moment that is happening right now with everything else going on in the world. So uh, in answer to your question, I think I already did with about five or six answers. Uh, and you're the best, John. <laughs> that's a laugh. <laughs> Hi, Hi, we're, we're the, the Swarthouts and you're watching, watching the front porch show. show.
It's simple. You're looking for fulfilling employment, but you're having trouble finding a job that suits your skill set. Partners in Employment is a not-for-profit organization assisting people from all walks of life in Huron and Perth counties to find and keep employment, including people with disabilities, mature workers, students, and people new to the area. At Partners in Employment, their goal is simple, to match potential employees to employer needs. They can be an ongoing resource to you even after employment has begun. Contact Partners in Employment today. Hi, I'm Dave Stacy, and you're watching the Front Porch Show. During COVID, a lot of people have been getting dogs like Hank here, and they want the dog to be trained. And so a lot of people have gone to Michelle Lewis, and she's dropped in to the Front Porch Show today to give us a few hints. Hey, Michelle, how are you? Hi, John. Who's your friend there? Uh, this is Bailey. I've had Bailey 10 years. Uh, we've uh, been biking since he was just a baby. Uh, he's been going on picnics with me um, all the time. He goes kind of anywhere I can take him with me. He even helps with my dog training occasionally. 15 to 17 years ago, I used to watch just hours on end every night, uh, like till 2 in the morning parrot training videos. And then uh, I found a school that did dog training and I found out that they were the uh, same technique across the animal kingdom. Uh, so yeah, that was very cool because I can use all the stuff I learned with birds, with dogs, with ferrets, with bunnies, all that. Uh, the dog training I started six years ago. I went to Ottawa Canine School for my training and then um, I got about six jobs within the school between uh, kids bring their dogs to camp, the doggy daycare, uh, dog training. I taught a couple different classes there and then uh, I came back here and started doing it probably three or four years ago now but it's yeah just gotten a little busier lately which has been fun. When you say the same thing what exactly do you mean? Uh, so I use a lot of operant conditioning, so uh, basically teaching the animal um, it has control over its environment, um, So, and if it does kind of what we want it to, it'll earn a reward, so it feels almost like to the animal, it should feel like they're training us. So, oh, if I'm nice and quiet, I can get my owner to give me a treat. So it kind of becomes more of a team thing rather than, you do this for me. <laughs> right, I understand. How long does it take to train a dog? Uh, it depends on what you're training and um, yeah, how especially how consistent you are because uh, yeah, huge things consistency because you can get so far and then if you're like, oh, my dog's doing pretty well now, I'm just going to stop the training, it'll just regress. When people are training a dog, what are some of the common mistakes that they make? Uh, a lot of times people give in to uh, dogs kind of pushing for attention. Uh, it's a really big one I find. Um, so if the dog's barking and wants the toy thrown, they're like, oh, I just want the dog to be quiet, so I'll throw the toy. And then the dog's like, oh, now I know how to get my owner to play. I'll just bark a lot and keep throwing the toy at them. So, uh, yeah, it, and it just becomes a habit of the dog because they're not necessarily trying to be bad or spite you. They're just trying to do what works for them and what has worked for them in the past. And COVID has affected this? Yeah, yep, everyone's at home with puppies, and then uh, the puppies are used to people being home all the time, so when people go back to work, the dogs are like, what's going on? Where's my owner? So uh, we're just, uh, a lot of it's helping them to learn to be okay on their own. A lot of dogs have fears, and what would you recommend to help dogs get over some of the fears they have? I do a lot of the, a lot of socialization as well, so um, we do a lot of treating for bravery, uh, so I never want to lure the dog towards something so they feel like, oh, I have to go near the scary object to um, get what I want. Uh, we let them explore it naturally, and then if they do choose to go explore the object, I'll throw some treats for that. And then part of the reward can then uh, be coming away from the object and getting a second treat, because then it's uh, they get a reward for being brave, and then they get kind of two rewards. One is moving away from the scary object, and one is uh, getting another reward for that. Yeah, that's great. That's like fears of things. But one of the common fears that dogs have are with lightning and thunder and fireworks. Uh, how do you deal with something like that? Yeah, uh, what I do is I bring a speaker and I play the different sounds and uh, according to how frightened the puppies are, uh, I can adjust the sound and adjust how close the dogs are to the speaker. So it's a really good way to control it and build up for the real thing. Obviously you don't have like the pressure um, of a thunderstorm around with just a speaker, but um, it gets them used to the noise and you can kind of work on the different parts of it instead. Many people get dogs when they're older in life, they have grandchildren or even just children. And the dogs have to learn how to be good with children. How do you accomplish this? Um, yeah, I do a lot of uh, just kind of 
training to do nothing or remain calm or uh, a lot of go to place training. So I often give my clients a blanket or if they have a dog bed, um, I just teach a really strong go to place cue. So then the dog has a place where the kids aren't allowed to kind of go poke at them, but the, and the dog knows it can kind of come up on its own terms, which uh, typically calms everything down a bit. And then uh, we do a lot of not jumping as well because dogs just want to be up and in your face to say hi. They're not really doing it to be mean. So uh, we just got to teach them a more polite way to say hello, which is usually sit. So I teach sit and uh, sit. I teach the people as puppy please. So when the puppy wants something, they got to come sit quietly at your feet. Many of the dogs around St. Mary's, I've noticed, are, are really well trained. And I, I think you're a very good part of this. I hope so. I have noticed that there's a lot of good dogs in town and they all walk, like there's so many work that walk so well. Um, yeah, I hope I'm a part of that. And if I'm not yet, hopefully I contribute to that. Um, yeah. If people want to get hold of you, train your pet, and I know it can be more than a dog, it could be a cat, it could be many other animals, a rabbit, I think you do, and, and a parrot. How do they get hold of you? Facebook's the best way. I do text as well, but um, I try to stick to one social media just so I'm not missing people's messages, so I uh, mostly through the Facebook page. Michelle, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to appear on the Front Porch Show. Yeah, no problem. It's been awesome. Thank you. Hi, I'm John Linus, and you're watching the Front Port Show. If you're wanting something clean, shout out Cascades. Cascades! If you're wanting something clean, shout out Cascades. Cascades! A suit, to tie, a wedding dress, there's not a stain we can't address. If you're wanting something clean, shout out Cascades. Cascades! Is it personal or commercial? It's Cascade. Cascade! Is it personal or commercial? It's Cascade. Cascade. If it's cotton wool or suede, manufactured or handmade, is it personal or commercial? It's Cascade. Cascade. 34 Water Street South is where you to go. 34 Water Street South is where you go. Got a problem? Don't you cuss it. Contact us and we'll discuss it. Call 519-284-1390. Almost got it. Anyways, call us. Cascades. Good. Hi, I'm Isis Ford. You're watching the Front Porch Show. Well, does the name Daisy Anderson mean anything to anybody? Well, if it doesn't, it sure will soon because she's a young, up and coming star. A young, up and coming star, meaning that she's a senior, up and coming star. But, you know, as I know, as a professional musician for many, many years, it takes a lot of years before you become known. In this case, you know, this uh, Daisy Anderson started off in the older years of her life. I wouldn't say the twilight years. I think that's over 100 years old now. But she started off a little bit later than a lot of people. So it's going to be a lot of fun to interview her and find out what her story is. So, ladies and gentlemen... Daisy Anderson. Well, hello, Daisy Anderson. Welcome to the Front Porch Show. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, too. Boy, we're <laughs> here, and um, I think our audience would really like to know, when did you start uh, playing music? Probably after I retired. I found a guitar from a neighbor, and I started to play. I enjoyed it. I met friends who were playing in the nursing homes, and I joined them, and we've been playing ever since. Now, apparently you've been performing uh, for quite some time, and you started in your, are you saying you started in your mid-60s? <laughs> yes, a, a little plot. Okay. And I really, as a young person, didn't have time. I, we farmed, and we worked long hours every day, so... Uh, I really didn't have time. Well, you know, you started playing the guitar. Were you Are you self-taught? Yes. So you just picked up a six-string guitar and yeah. you decided to pluck a few, what, what we call pluck a few chords. That's right. That's and all I know is a very few chords. Well, uh, I, well, country and western <laughs> music is only based basically on a few chords. That's and right. You're quite an inspiration, I, I imagine, to a lot of people because uh, not only, uh, you know, have you passed the 65 uh, point and you're still <laughs> performing and you have a three-piece band. And, and, and what yeah. do you call your band? We are called the Pinups. 
the okay. pinups. The pinups, yes, we're yeah. How apropos. Yeah. And the pinups uh, include what? What's the name of your members of the pinups? Well, there's two members. Okay. The lady is Stephanie. Okay. And the gentleman is Jim. Okay. And, gentleman uh, Jim. Gentleman Jim. I call him Cowboy Jim when we're out playing. Okay. And uh, he yodels and he does things like that. People love him. <laughs> I'll bet. I'll bet they do. So, so yeah, now we you have fun. Uh, But we've only been together really since the virus as a little group because we didn't know each other before that. Well, Daisy, you know, starting out in the music business at any age is not easy. And sometimes we need a little help. So you didn't just appear with the guitar and singing on your own. Um, did you have, uh, you know, were you a duet? And, and, and if so, uh, what was the name of the other artist that was performing with you? The lady, the lovely lady who played with me and, and actually encouraged me to keep playing was Anna Stevens. And she lives here in St. Mary's and she was a nurse all her life here at the St. Mary's Hospital and a, a very lovely, kind lady. So we played here in the nursing home Kingsway, Wildwood, the Friendship Center. Uh, wow. We just played wherever anybody asked us to go, we'd go. Uh, and you have a trio, and now you uh, appear in um, the St. Mary's area, Stratford area? Yes. <clears throat> uh, this virus uh, song that uh, that you have on uh, YouTube uh, today it's very topical of what's going on with the COVID nineteen. Tell us a little bit about this song. Um, is it a happy go lucky song? Is it a sad song? What kind of song is it? Because we are going to hear it uh, momentarily. So it, it, it is a happy song, and it's a song that I meant to just give people some hope and some encouragement that if we hold on this will get by and we will be stronger from it all well that sounds like a terrific thing to do and congratulations for writing and playing a song like that speaking of playing i think right now what do you think we get the band together and uh play it live for all the people out there and uh, they'll know how to uh, find it on YouTube uh, by the end of the um, song. So, Daisy Anderson, thank you so much for being on the Front Porch Show this afternoon. And we're looking forward to uh, listening to uh, the pinups thank live. You. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you, Frank. Oh, when the virus is over, we'll be here. When the virus is over, we'll be here. No more isolation, we'll let kisses on our faces And when it's all over, we'll be here 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 When it's all over, we'll be here No more isolation, we'll let kisses on our faces And when it's all over, we'll be here 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 When it's over we'll be here. We no stood more strong together. Depend on our faces, and when it's all over, we'll be here. 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 The virus is over. We'll be here. We stood strong together. We beat the pandemic, and when it's all over, we'll be here. We'll be here. We'll be here. We'll be here when it's all over, we'll be here. We stood strong together, we beat the pandemic, and when it's all over, we'll be here. When the virus is over, we'll be here. When the virus is over, we'll be here. No more isolation, we'll have kisses on our faces, and when it's all over, we'll be here. We'll be here. We'll be here. We'll be here. When it's all over, we'll be here. We no more isolation. We'll have kisses on our faces. And when it's all over, we'll be here. 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 When it's all over, we'll be here. We stood strong together. We beat the pandemic. And when it's all over, we'll be here. 
We'll be here. We'll be here. We'll be here. We'll be here. When it's all over, we'll be here. We stood strong together. We beat the pandemic. And when it's all over, we'll be here. 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 And when it's all over, we'll be here. We now come to the special part of our show where we have our mystery guest. And this time, he is the, currently the holder of 61 NHL records. And that is, can only be number 99, Wayne Gray. We interrupt, interrupt this, this program, program for a, a special, special report. report. This is Don Van Galen, your ace reporter for the Front Porch Show, following up on the Tallulah Russian drone infestation of Rice Lake that we reported on two weeks ago. We have been unable to contact Professor Greytai from the CIA, but we have located Amelia and we are here to see what she thinks about these new discoveries. Amelia, were you aware that the Professor Greytai of the CIA is MIA? Uh, yes, I was aware of this fact. Uh, indeed, the uh, CIA is MIA currently. Uh, but I, I wish to um, uh, address the concerns about that. Uh, I am on the case. Wonderful. And what have you discovered? Uh, yes, I've discovered very important things. Mostly that the uh, infiltration of the DNA from uh, Tulula seems to be entering the community via color waves color waves. Very interesting. Do you have any examples of these so-called color waves? We actually do have many examples of the color wave phenomenon all throughout the community, especially in the downtown core. May I present Exhibit A? Well, indeed, that is a color wave. Somewhat uh, scary, though. Well, I don't know if the scary is actually the correct terminology. It's extremely interesting and, and attractive in, 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 in many ways. Really? And do you have any other examples of these color waves? Uh, yes, aside from the multiple uh, colored uh, garbage cans that we see here, we also have St. Mary's colored down spouts. Colored down spouts? Can you show us one of those? Oh, yes. We will be approaching the first colored down spout in the uh, downtown area momentarily. Uh, why don't you come with me? Would this be the example of the down spouts you were speaking of, Amelia? Oh, 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 yeah. Downspout. You will note that many other communities have gray, bland downspouts. Well, this is definitely not gray or bland. It's certainly very colorful and I submit very dangerous. Uh, I, I don't know if dangerous actually is the correct terminology here. It's very interesting, it's intriguing, um, and but possibly a very positive um, impact upon the community. Are there any more examples of these color manifestations you speak of? Uh, yes, so we have, first of all, seen the colorful garbage bins. We have seen the colorful downspouts. Uh, there is also the colorful picnic tables. Picnic tables. I guess we better investigate. So, uh, uh, yes, so as I was saying, uh, this is now our prime example uh, right downtown close to our town hall. Um, this is an example of Tallulah's DNA infiltrating the community. Well, it certainly is cleverly disguised as a local monument, but I still think there is great danger here. Well, as I mentioned before, danger might not be the correct terminology. One has to explore and, and welcome, uh, welcome new phenomenon. Do you think it's safe to touch it? Well, uh, possibly not safe, but something perhaps we should try. Well, in the interest of science and journalism, which is, of course, forefront in the Front Porch show, I think we should. I am game to attempt this with you. Okay. Are you ready? On the count of three. One. Two. Three. Wow. I feel it. Did you feel it? I felt something rippling through my body. Yes, indeed, I did feel something. <laughs> well, was it good for you? 
Uh, yes, the rippling uh, effect was quite pleasurable, I must say. I, I, I can see why this DNA is uh, infiltrating the community. We're, we're a lucky community to have colorful DNA feelings rippling um, and vibrating through our bodies. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. Um, I, I, I think we should go back to the studio now. This, this has, has been, been a special, special report. report. We, we now, now return, return to our, our regular, regular program. program. Wayne, we wish you the very best on your spectacular comeback as a player to the NHL. Hi, I'm Ann Slater, and you're watching the Front Court Show. Hi, I'm Craig, one of the owners here at Jacobs Liquidation in St. Mary's. Come on in and let me show you around. We have everything you need for your home, whether it's appliances, furniture, housewares, we have clothing and shoes and towels and mats, health products, hair products, whatever you need, we probably have it and a whole lot more. But I'm going to tell you the truth. Some of the stuff when you come here won't be here. Our products are so well priced, stuff doesn't sit around long here. Every time you come here, it's a completely different experience as we get thousands of new products every single week. So come on in to Jacob's Liquidation at 34 Wellington Street North in St. Mary's. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and also sign up for our email newsletter so you never miss a deal. Hi, I'm Simon Fraser and you're watching The Front Porch Show. So, Don Van Galen has returned as we can see from his special report. Don, I have to say uh, that after the mysterious disappearance of Professor Greytop, oh, yeah. Uh, who we all know and respect, of the CIA, uh, to, that's the committee to ex inspect every, anything, right? Yes. Yes, okay, we got to get the right CIA. Anything. We were really concerned uh, to see you and, uh, and Amelia mm -hmm. uh, infected by the Tallulah Russian drone virus. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, well, it was really scary, John, and uh, I am feeling better, thank you very much, because uh, my doctor, uh, uh, Dr. Fauci, uh, he said uh, I'm not contagious anymore, uh, despite, you know, the apparent appearance of my shirt here, uh, but uh, he says uh, I'll be back to normal uh, once I've had my hydroxychloroquine double backs. And how is Amelia? Well, Amelia is feeling much better as well. Uh, she hasn't had her vax yet, but uh, she, when she does, she says she's going to be back on the case and she's going to break this wide open and forever answer the question about what these paranormal activities are all about. Yes. Well, welcome to this Front Porch Show, where we the, the, the show that always tells you the absolute truth. Uh, no fake news here at all. Not at all. Yeah. And... Uh, when the Don Municipal gets, Inquirer, and that's what we are. Watch the next show as to what Don means when he talks about getting back to normal. Because <laughs> we're not quite sure what that is either. Yeah. Getting back to normal on the front porch show. On the front porch show. Ouch. Well, we promise to keep you updated on this important story in St. Mary. Mary, St. Mary's. There we go. Okay, well, it's time for the show to end. We're going to end it with a bit of music. Frankie. Well, absolutely. What we're going to do, Hank... If somebody wanted the, the whole Hank up, come here, Hank. What we're going to do is a Hank Williams song. That a boy done. Yeah. Okay. So let's all sing this together. It's all hey, good looking, and it's especially for Hank the dog. Ready? Hey, go and look at what you got cooking. How's about cooking something up with me? visiting us here on Facebook and the front 
porch show. YouTube and all around the world. We'll be back again soon. Thank you. I'd rather be than my hometown they call Stone Town, the prettiest town for miles around where little falls laugh and people share smiles, treat you like family. Home, St. Mary's, St. Mary's, home to me. Home, St. Mary's, St. Mary's, home to me.